Okay, so this question, um, it says to indicate on the graph of F all critical points and which correspond to local maxima, local minima, and which to neither. So this is F of X, the original function. And later on we're going to ask the answer the same exact question but with the derivative and then the second derivative. So that um, we can make the connection between all of the different kinds of functions. So um, the original function, finding the, the, uh, the critical points and the local maximums and minimums um, is, is very straightforward. Um, this would be a, uh, a local maximum. This one is a local minimum. And this is a local maximum. And all three of these are also uh, critical points. Now that's all fine and dandy, um, but now what about this one here? Uh, this one is different because see, this is a the first derivative of a graph, not necessarily the one we just did, but this is a a. Uh, a graph of the first derivative and the question the question is um, indicate the x values that are critical points of the original function the original function so here you have to be a little bit careful and then you have to say which ones are local maximums local minimums or neither now um, to, to be able to answer this question um, we need to remember um, how we find the uh, local maximums and minimums um, when we find the critical points. Remember the first derivative test when you uh, when you do it, um, you know you have this uh, number line and let's say for example I don't know you have it four and then seven and then you get that it's positive here, negative and then positive. And so remember what you say is that since it's increasing and then it's decreasing then as long as it's continuous, there's going to be a maximum there. And then if it's increasing here, then that means there's going to be a minimum. So uh, the sign of the derivative is what tells you whether it's a maximum or a minimum. Well, remember the critical points are where the first derivative is equal to zero. Since this is a graph of the first derivative, that means this spot, this spot, and this spot are critical points. Because in all of these spots, the first derivative is equal to zero. Okay, now, now that I have that squared away, these are all critical points. But at this x value, notice that over here the first derivative goes from being a positive to negative. And this is similar to what we have right here on this number line. At 4, since it goes from positive to negative, that means the function goes from increasing to decreasing. That means this is going to be a local maximum. Okay, now let's make the connection right here. Here the derivative is negative, and then it becomes positive. That's like this situation that we have here at 7, where it's decreasing and then it's increasing, that means this value right here is going to be a local minimum. Okay. Now what about this one though? This one, the derivative goes from being positive to positive. This means that the original function goes from being increasing to increasing. This tells me this is neither max nor min because it would have to be increasing and then decreasing or decreasing and then increasing. It has to change sign on the derivative to be a maximum or a minimum. So this one is neither. This is like if you have, um, you know, you've seen this before on graphs. So this is like if your function does something like um, it has, it's increasing, and then it has a flat spot, and then it's increasing again. Like, for example, the function x cubed has this 
this characteristic. And that's it. Okay, so now on this one we have a similar graph. Uh, it's not exactly the same one, but it's it's very similar. Um, now this is the 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 first derivative, and we want to find the x values that are inflection points of the original function. Okay, so let's let's go through the uh, the thought process here. Remember, inflection point is where the function changes from concave up to concave down. Okay, then, which is when the second derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so if an inflection point happens when the second derivative is equal to zero, then that would mean that it's like the first derivative having a critical point. Okay, so what we're looking for then on the first derivative, which is this graph, is where does it have critical points. And so this is right here at these uh, flat spots. This is where the derivative of the derivative is either zero or undefined. In this case just zero. In each one of these spots the first derivative has a maximum or a minimum. So this means that its derivative, which is the second derivative, is going to equal zero at each one of these spots that I just pointed out. Okay, now notice that there's a, uh, a, a change in the derivative. See how uh, the, this, this function, the first derivative, is increasing. This means that um, the second derivative right here, its derivative is going to be positive. And then right here, the second derivative is going to be negative because now it's decreasing. So this means that we have a inflection point. Now you can say the same thing about right here, the second derivative is negative because it's decreasing and then it's positive so this is also an inflection point. And then you can say exactly the same thing for this one and exactly the same thing for that one. Each one of those are inflection points because its derivative, which is the second derivative, is changing sign. Here it's positive, then it's negative. Here it's negative and then positive. At each one of those points it changes sign. And that's why it's an inflection point. Okay, now in this last question, uh, we're being asked, we're being given um, a graph of the uh, second derivative. So this is a graph of the second derivative, and we're told to find the inflection points of the original function. So that's where um, the inflection points are, where the function changes concavity. In other words, it's where the second derivative changes from uh, either positive to negative or negative to positive. And so notice that um, these spots are all places where where the second derivative is equal to zero. These are all spots where um, we can have a uh, concavity change. And notice that here the second derivative is positive and then it becomes negative. And so so here, because it goes from positive to negative, um, that means right here I'm going to have a inflection point. And notice right here, the second derivative goes from negative to positive. That means this guy is also an inflection point. But right here, the second derivative goes from positive to positive. So even though the second derivative is zero, this one is not an inflection point. And that's it.